My name is Marion Wilson. I was in the Navy for three years, operating a heavy equipment. We first hit, uh, we left Hawaii in 43, went to Anui Top in February, and then we left there and went to Saipan, stayed there for about a week until Tinian was cleared whereby that we would be safe. Then from there we went over to Tinian and built two airstrips. One of them was in North Airstrip to whereby the atomic bomb took off from there and bombed Japan and also the second bomb took off from the North Field, went and dropped his load. And then they returned back to Tinian. I started out as an oiler on dozers and things and uh, stayed on that for so long and everything and I was on the night shift and I asked my supervisor if I could ride with one of the guys and try to learn how to do it, which I did after so long a time while I was operating the machine and I got a rate, a higher rate, which was machinist mate three, third class by operating and uh, one of the things that uh, I guess I'll always remember, we was coming into the field, I had a pan uh, gravel on it, coming down uh, to unload it and everything. And about that time they hollered for meal time. When I did, why I was watching them and uh, I hit this about all foot and a half cliff there. Uh, at the end of the runway and everything, and turn my Laterna pan over. So I just let it sit there. We went and eat supper that night. <laughs> That's one thing I remember, but uh, I don't know, they just, it was a natural thing for us because uh, we didn't get to do much of anything, just play cards in the tents and so forth like that. Uh, wasn't nowhere for us to go and everything, they did, uh, allow us to go out swimming from the beach there out in the water. We'd go out all 10 to 20 feet out and get on coral rock and come back swimming in and everything. Uh, the coral rock was, we had a rooter that was pulled behind the uh, tractor. I had a D8, which was a large one and everything, and you'd drop this uh, rooter behind the rock and jerk it until it came up and then they load it up and carry it down to the end of the strip where they had a crusher there. When the crusher got through with it and everything and they were ready to put the coral rock down and everything, they uh, loaded up in trucks and then uh, put it out on the airstrips and everything and rollers packed it down and then they come along the last thing would be the black top so the planes could get off and everything. And uh, best I recall on the thing, it was about, uh, I'd say 8,000 feet or something like that. Uh, had to be because the plane had to be so powerful and everything to pick the loads up as heavy were as they were. And also with that atomic bomb in there too, which was heavier for it and everything, and um, they dug a trench in the runway and pulled the 29 Nola Gay over it and everything and took a crane and raised it up till they got it in the uh, plane. They didn't uh, load the uh, detonator until they were off of the ground and uh, going towards Japan and everything. And after they got through, uh, bombing, well, what it is, one plane uh, went, which was uh, the Enola Gay, with the first load, but there was a second plane went with him, accompanying him to the bomb site, and uh, when they got to the dropping the bomb and everything, why, uh, they dropped it and everything, and they had to circle real fast on account of the uh, noise and everything. And uh, both planes made it, 
they kind of shake the plane, did shook the planes rather, and they come back uh, okay. And uh, the next day, the plane that went with them on that first trip, I believe they carried the second atomic bomb back a couple of days later or something. When the first atomic bomb was uh, dropped, uh, Japan did not surrender, so they had to send a second bomb over there. And you can see the uh, disaster that they went through as thousands of people were killed and everything. And uh, after a few days from there, uh, after the second plane went, why well, Japan gave up and they was on board ship. I believe it was the Missouri, I'm not sure. Uh, Japan uh, people got on board the ship and signed the papers and everything, and that officially uh, was when the war was declared over with. Well, everybody went mad wild, you know, and they couldn't believe it, and everybody was ready to come home before we even heard about that, you know. Let's get this thing over with and everything. But uh, it was on the north end of the strip where the Enola Gay uh, landed when they come back, and there was two or three uh, officials they had him in that paper there, showed them, and they put a pin on him and all that stuff and so forth. But uh, it was a day or two before we actually knew that they had uh, made the trip and done what they were supposed to and come back. And uh, I don't know uh, whether they announced it over the microphone. They probably did that way so everybody would know that the war was over. So it was a matter of corresponding our music, uh, radios, whatever it was and everything, for us to find out. And of course, everybody was in happy doobly because we knew then the war was over and we were coming home. We wouldn't be out there no year or two like we had been. Our battalion, uh, the 110th, had not the war got over with, we were scheduled to go to Japan. And it was construction work, I guess, tearing down uh, fields or whatever they had for us to do. But uh, our commander got word to it and everything, and his feeling was the 110th will not go to Japan because we had been out there long enough uh, as it was and everything, and we were coming back to the States. So that made us very happy then to know that we wasn't going forward and everything.